Hey, so this was a comment on the TikTok I did where I was taking eggs that had hairline cracks in them from processing and throwing them up in the air to see if they'd break in the field and letting the hens eat them. Let me tell you why we do that instead of redirecting those towards people with food insecurity. For us at Blackbird, there are two big reasons we don't send our cast-offs to people who are suffering from food insecurity. Number one is because we have a mutual aid program where we raise money so that we can give our good stuff to people at community fridges, food aid organizations, food pantries, whatever. We don't like the idea of giving people stuff out of the waste stream just because it doesn't feel good to give people cracked eggs. Second reason is a reason that's going to raise a lot of hairs on the backs of a lot of people's necks. It's liability. Now, food security advocates will usually respond to the liability question with three points. Number one, the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Act. Number two, the fact that most people suffering from food insecurity do not have the means to afford an attorney to go after you. And number three, the fact that there just aren't that many cases of food poisoning in the United States anyway, much less instances of people being sued successfully over food poisoning cases. Let's address each of those in turn. Number one, the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Act prevents people and organizations from being liable for cases of food poisoning or any other kind of harmful effects of donated food as long as there is no negligence involved. The problem with this is that it doesn't prevent you from being sued. If you are sued by someone who claims that you were negligent and that's the reason they got sick from whatever food product you gave them, you're going to have to go to court and prove that you were not negligent. In our state, in Virginia, you'll have to submit something called a grounds for defense. And if you're an LLC or a C corporation or an S corporation or <clears throat> anything other than an individual, you're going to have to hire an attorney to submit those documents because you cannot represent yourself. So you're going to pay a few thousand dollars to submit your grounds for defense, and then you're going to pay a few thousand dollars more to either go to trial or to settle the case out of court because going to trial will be incredibly expensive. Either way, the second you get sued, whether you're liable or not, you're about to be out of pocket thousands of dollars. And a small business like a bakery or a small farm or whatever often can't afford that. Like there's no difference for them between having to spend 10 grand on a lawyer to prove they're not guilty and being found guilty with like a million dollar judgment. Either way, they're filing bankruptcy and they're done. And that's if you're not found guilty of negligence. Now, if I'm giving away cracked eggs that I know are cracked to people suffering from food insecurity, you could absolutely argue that that is negligence. Second issue, people that suffer from food insecurity usually don't have the means to get a lawyer to come after you if they are made sick by food that you gave them. There's two issues to that. Number one, people aren't so much afraid of poor people coming after them um, as they are of, say, insurance companies come after them. Lots of poor people or people who suffer from food insecurity and aren't quote-unquote poor are insured. And all it takes is for an insurance company to say, I don't feel like paying that bill. We've got attorneys on retainer anyway. Let's see how much we can get this down by going after whoever gave away this food. Insurance companies do not care. They will come after your ass if they think they can like protect their bottom line in any way. And number two, there's a whole industry of ambulance chasing personal injury attorneys who are willing to take on cases like this on spec and simply collect money if they win at no cost to the plaintiff. And third and finally, the one that people like to mention the most besides the Bill Emerson Act is the fact that there are very few cases of food poisoning in the United States and almost no instances that you can find of people being sued, especially successfully, over foodborne illness. And this is kind of one of those like chicken and egg kind of things where it's like the reason there are so few lawsuits and cases of food poisoning and stuff like that is precisely because people are so adamant about not letting cracked eggs and expired food and stuff like that into the food supply saying hey let's remove the safeguards that keep things like cracked eggs and expired food out of the food supply because nobody's getting sued or nobody's getting sick anyway it's kind of like saying nobody has polio so let's get rid of the vaccine so when you relax food safety standards just like if you were to suddenly get rid of the polio vaccine suddenly you're going to notice a lot more people getting hurt and you're going to realize why those safeguards were there in the first place. And so, in the meantime, uh, eggs with hairline cracks go to my hens as a protein and calcium supplement, and that's okay. We feed people who need to be fed by other means.